Good evening, everyone, and happy Sabbath, and welcome back to another evening together where we can study God's Word together. Friends, just this week, there was a massive IT outage cyber attack that shut down all the internet. So, the mere fact that God brought you all here tonight is a blessing. So, young people, let us not take this time for granted. Let us not. Let us be serious. Let us be focused. Put away all the distractions so that we can hear a word from the Lord. Before we get into God's word, faith will sing the song, I want to go to heaven. But before we get into that, let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for bringing us here and help us, Lord, not to take this time together for granted. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Better land. 
I believe that song, I Want to Go to Heaven, has prepared our hearts to receive a word from the Lord. Join me in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for bringing the young people here tonight. And as we open up your words, give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our theme for this evening is that the youth must be rightly trained in order to pass the final test, the final crisis. I want to begin this lesson with a quotation from Education, page 271. It says, With such an army of workers as our youth, rightly trained, how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming king, soon coming savior might be carried to the whole world. So the question is, who gives this instruction that the youth must be trained? The answer is, it is the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 54. In order, friends, for the youth to be used in the last days to pass the final test, they must be taught by the Lord and also godly, righteous parents. Isaiah chapter 54, and I hope you all are ready to take notes and you are ready to... Um, Pay attention this evening. Isaiah 54, beginning in verse 13, the Bible says, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. But here we see in Isaiah 54, verse 13, it says, And all thy children. Now, are the children only to be taught? No. The Bible lets us know in John chapter 6 that it is the young people, the teenagers that also have to be trained, those over 12 years old. The Bible lets us know in John chapter 6, John chapter 6, beginning in verse 45, those over 12 also must be trained. John chapter 6, verse, verse 45, the Bible says this, It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh on to me. So here we see that those under 12 there in Isaiah 54 verse 13 must be trained and those over 12 the young man must be trained. So now, who are the first instructors? Who are the first teachers so that the young people can be rightly trained? The answer is it is the parents. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. So parents, this lesson is not only for the young people, but it is also an admonition to the parents who are watching this evening. Proverbs chapter 22. It is time to train the young people so that they can pass the final test. That is our theme for this evening. Proverbs 22, beginning in verse 6, the Bible says, Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So what this verse is letting us know is that once the young people are trained, when they get older, they will not depart from it. But not only will they not depart from the truth, but also they will be able to pass and meet the final, the coming crisis. Now in the Bible, there are several examples of young people who were trained rightly and they did not depart from the truth and they passed the test. We have examples like Joseph, right? He was rightly trained and therefore he passed his test. We have Samuel and the list goes on. But in this lesson this evening, we're going to be focusing on the four Hebrew boys. But before we get into that, when we think of the word training, right? What do the military personnel, why do they train? Why? Because they know a war. They know a battle is coming, right? That is why they train. The athletes, right? They train because they have a big um, competition to compete in. So why must the young people be trained? Because a great test is coming. Turn with me now to the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Now, as we're turning to the book of Isaiah here, the Bible lets us know in Isaiah that Babylon was coming. And in Isaiah chapter 39, Isaiah 39, the Bible lets us know that um, the prophet Isaiah, he prophesied that Babylon was coming. And from Isaiah, it came to King Hezekiah and from King Hezekiah to all of Israel. The Bible lets us know in Isaiah 31, 39. 
Isaiah 39, beginning in verse 5, the Bible says, Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. Verse 7. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So why now was Daniel's, uh, the four Hebrew boys, why were they trained? Because they knew that Babylon was coming. That is what Isaiah 39 verse 5 through 7 is telling us. Now, let us make the application to us in 2024. SDA parents, SDA young people, we have our own version of this prophecy. Do we not? When we look at Revelation chapter 14, turn there with me. When we look at Revelation 14, when we look at the, the first the first angel's message. When we look at this, we see that Babylon is coming, the coming national Sunday law. When we look at the first angel's message and also the third angel's message, Revelation 14. Turn there with me. Revelation 14, and we're going to begin in verse number 6. The Bible says, And I saw another angel fly in the middle, the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven, earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Verse 8, and there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, let's focus in on verse number nine. This is Babylon now. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of of the lamb. So parents, right? You are to train the young people, the parents, the guardians, right? The youth leaders and also the teachers have to teach the young people, right? That the coming mark of the beast, that national Sunday law is imminent. Therefore, we have to be rightly trained. And friends, how close are we to this crisis? How close are we to the national Sunday law crisis? We are very close. When we see the signs, right, we're very close. Now, the Bible lets us know in Matthew 24 that when we see four particular events, know that the end is near. Again, when we see these four crises happen upon the earth, we know that Jesus is coming very soon and that modern day Babylon is coming again. Matthew 24. Turn there with me. Matthew 24. We have to, we have to be Train friends, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, and we're going to look at now verse number 3. The Bible says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Verse number 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Let's focus now. Verse number 6. And ye shall hear of wars. That's number 1. In 2024, do we not see wars? Yes, we do. You will hear war, wars, rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Friends, young people, parents, we see this happening in 2024. So no, we don't have to guess. We know that the mark of the beast, we know that Jesus' second coming is at hand. He's He's coming very soon. So parents, it is time for us to, for you all to rightly train the young people so that they may be ready to pass the final test 
It is time, friends. Turn with me now to the book of Daniel chapter 1. We're going to look at now the first test, the first test that the four Hebrew boys went through. And that first test was, that first test that they faced was false education. Daniel chapter 1, the Babylonian education. That was the first test when they were brought captive from Jerusalem. Daniel chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse number 4. The Bible says this, Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding signs and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongues of the Chaldeans. Right. That's what we see in Daniel chapter one, verse four, that the king, he wanted to educate the Hebrew young people. But this education, it was false education friends it was false education worldly education but friends Daniel and the three Hebrew boys they did not learn this education why because their parents gave them true education at home so that is why friends I praise God for my mother who has given me the true education I praise God for three angels Academy right the school which I attended that gives the true education that is far superior, far superior than that of the world's education, Babylon's education. But again, Daniel and his, and the, and his friends, they still, though they were rightly trained, they still had to make a choice. They still had to make a decision to remember that which they learned and to put aside what Nebuchadnezzar was trying to indoctrinate upon them. That second test that the four Hebrew boys faced, that second test, it was the test of changing their names. Again, that test, it was changing their names. And in the Bible, what do names represent? Names, it represents character, right? So although, watch the application, although the four Hebrew boys' names were changed. Their characters remained intact. And you young people might be wondering, how can this be? When the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar, ordered that their names were to be changed, how were their, how was, why was their character still intact? That was because their parents rightly trained them. Daniel and his three friends, they understood who they were. They knew that they were God's people. They knew their message. They knew their mission, brothers and sisters. So parents, what are you to teach your children? You have to teach them that they are Seventh-day Adventists, Bible-believing Christians. They have to know their message, present truth. They have to know their mission, which is to evangelize. It does not matter what the world calls us young people. We have to remember who we are in Christ. We have to remember who we are in Christ. We cannot allow the worldly environment that we are living in to change who we are. We have to remember what our mission is and what our message is today. Brothers and sisters, what was the third test? That third test, it was on the point of Diet. It was on the point of health reform. Daniel chapter 1 beginning in verse 5. Right, the Bible says this. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So here we see that Nebuchadnezzar made a decree that all the young people were to partake of the king's meat, flesh foods which goes against God's word, right? And they are to drink the king's wine, which also goes against God's word. It goes against health reform. So friends, did Daniel and his friends, did they bow? No, they did not. Why? Because they were rightly trained from home. Their parents taught those young people. They taught them to honor health reform. They lived health reform in their home to stay away from the flesh foods, to stay away from the dairy products, to stay away from the stimulating drinks, right? The stimulating beverages. They were taught this at home. So when they were brought to Babylon, they were able to say in Daniel chapter one and verse eight, they were able to say, 
but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank, right? Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So, so parents, let's make that application. So parents, what are you now to teach your children? What are you now to live in your homes? It is health reform. Living the principles of health reform, staying away from the flesh food, staying away from the, the health destroying beverages. But young people, though we might be trained at home to be health reformers, we still have to make a choice. We still have to make a choice. Will we honor God's word on the point of health reform or will we defile our bodies? That is the question this evening. That is the question. We're going to be focusing now on that fourth test, which brings us to Daniel chapter 3. This one is the ultimate test because the Bible lets us know in Daniel chapter 3 that they were tested on the point of false worship. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? We just looked at in Revelation 14, we just saw the third angel's message, right? Which talks about the coming mark of the beast. Well, Daniel and his, well, the three Hebrew boys, they also had a similar test. The Bible lets us know in Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 7, the Bible says, Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages, they fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Here we see the king he forced all the nations to bow down and worship this golden image. This was idolatry, false worship. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 12. What was now the three Hebrew boy, boys' model? Did they bow? Hmm? Did they bow? Praise God, they did not. Daniel 3 verse 12, the Bible says this. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor do they worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So young people, parents, the only reason, the only way that these three Hebrew boys were able to stand for God was because they were taught rightly from home. The parents at home were teaching those three Hebrew boys true worship. In the home, present truth was going on. In the home, the parents brought the young people to present truth churches. They weren't going to churches that was upholding idolatry worship, uh, um, idol worship, right? They were not going to the worldly schools, right? They were brought to schools and churches that upheld true worship. That is why when they were brought to this test, they were able to stand for God. So let's make the application in 2024. Parents, you are to bring your children to God-fearing, God-standing schools and also the right churches. So that when the mark of the beast, that national Sunday law is enforced, and when the whole world is given two options, either worship God on the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath, or worship the beast and the image on the first day of the week, Sunday. The choice, young people, is ours today. The choice is ours today. Though they were rightly trained, they still had to make that decision. They still had to make that decision, friends. Friends, this application, these three Hebrew boys, because they stood for God, God stood for them. So now, here's the question. What was the secret sauce? What was the secret, right, that the, th that the three Hebrew boys were able to stand, right? There has to be a secret. I'm going to tell you that secret. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 2. And as we're turning to Daniel chapter 2, that secret of those three Hebrew boys standing, that secret was in a crisis, they prayed. But not only in a crisis did they pray, but they knew 
how to pray. They knew the science of prayer. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2, verse 13, the Bible tells us this. Daniel 2, 13, the Bible says, And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain, right? So here we see that the king, he wanted to wipe out. He wanted to kill all the wise men, including Daniel and the three and his three friends. Verse number 19. The Bible says this, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel, he blessed the God of heaven. So in a crisis, brothers and sisters, Daniel and his friends, they were found having an all night prayer meeting. They had a strong, consistent prayer life. And where did they, where did they learn this from? They learned this from home. They were rightly trained. Their parents taught them to pray in the good times and also in the bad times. But not anyone can just pray, right? But they knew the science of prayer. They knew how to pray. They prayed back the scriptures. They knew how to pray. So parents, what are, what are you all to teach the young people how to pray? And to always pray in times of crisis. Friends, Here's the encouragement. Young people, here's the hope. Here's the hope. Because Daniel and his friends passed all those tests that were mentioned before, because they stood for God, they stood firm, and they did not allow the Babylonian environment to sway their beliefs because they were rightly trained. They did not bow down to that golden image, right? They did not pretend to tie their shoelaces, right? They did not, you know, uh, uh, pretend, right, that they bowed down. No, they stood for God. In Daniel chapter 1, all the other uh, Hebrew, Israelite, all the other Israelite young people were eating the flesh foods. They were drinking the wine, right? I'm sure Daniel and his three friends, they were probably made fun of. They were probably made fun of, oh, look at them over there. Oh, look at them. They're not eating. Look at them. They're eating there. They're eating the, the plant-based food. No, they still remained faithful to God. So young people, when we stand for God on a daily basis, when we say, listen, I'm not going to allow anything, my friends, where I'm around, the environment that I'm around to sway my beliefs, is a possibility. It's not a possibility. We will be called strange. We will be made fun of. But young people, the encouragement is once we stand for God, God, he will stand for us. And in a crisis, God will deliver. The Bible lets us know in Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 beginning in verse 16. In that crisis, God, he stood for them. He came through for them. He delivered them. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If, if it be so, the God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will. They had faith. They didn't say he might. No, they said he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 19. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor will we worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And young people, as I was studying this account, as I was preparing to, to be live with you all at this moment, I was like, wow, the thought, it dawned on me, wow. These three young people, because, they're, because the foundation that their parents laid was so strong, they were able to look at the king, Nebuchadnezzar, big old intimidating Nebuchadnezzar, and they were able to tell him, listen, we are not going to worship the image. Our allegiance is to God and God alone. And young people, this experience, this faith, this courage, can be given to each and every one of us. But young people, we have to be found in prayer. And also, we have to listen to what our parents are telling us. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
Young people having that strong foundation, that firm foundation will help us in the long run. We're coming full circle. It will help us in the long run that when we get older, we will not depart from the truth. And when we are tested, not only the tests that we go through now, but the great final test, we will be able to stand firm and strong to the Lord. It's decision time now. Young people, it's decision time. Who today says, Lord, I'm going to stand for you. Put your hands up in the chat. The Lord, he sees your hands. Kneel with me in prayer if this is your prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for what we have learned. Lord, help us encourage the parents, Lord, to rightly train the young people so that they can be fully fit and so that they can be used in your army, just as we learned last week. Thank you for this service and be with us throughout the remainder of the Sabbath. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and I hope this message was a blessing to you all. God bless.